Tonight, we're learning more about the five members of the Sisk family allegedly murdered by their 14-year-old brother and son. Good evening, I'm Connor Ward. And I'm Mike Black. The youngest victims were his six-month-old, five-year-old, and six-year-old siblings. Our Renata De Gregorio joins us live from Elkmont High School, where the boy attended. Renata, this has got to be tough, really, on everybody there. Yes, Mike Connor, there are extra counselors here at the school, but today I talked with some family friends who are friends with the boy, and they don't even go to the school and chose not to go to school today. Now, family friends tell me that the boy's name is Mason, though police can't confirm that because he's a minor. Right now, people are just trying to focus on the lives of the Sisks rather than their murders. That RV was my home for three years, so, and... Uh... I couldn't have stayed in it unless Dub had done what he did. A man who felt like what family should be. Cynthia Black met John Sisk, nicknamed Dub, during a hard point in her life. He fixed up her home much on his own time, showing he cared not after years of knowing her, but from the beginning. It's unusual these days, you know, for, for people to care about people they don't really know. But he did. He, he, he treated me like family. I just really appreciated him. Those who knew special education teacher Mary Sisk say her impact will live on. Family friend Deanna Nichols says she helped my son in so many ways, from boosting his self-esteem to helping him learn to read with dyslexia. You can kind of understand adults, but kids, you know, I, I grieve for him because now he has no one. He doesn't. He doesn't have anybody to give him a hug. Many in Elkmont say they must all learn from the tragedy. The last thing he said to me, he says, we'll just keep on working on it. And he said, if you ever need it again, it'll be ready. <laughs> so I'll, I'll really miss him. There are reports out there that Mason found out that his stepmother was not his biological mother shortly before the murders happened. We've been getting conflicting reports about this. Some family friends telling me that they're rumors. Now, there's still no word from officers on how the apparent murder weapon, a handgun, got into the home illegally. Putting the Valley First live in Limestone County. Renata DiGregorio, WZBX News. Thank you for that update, Renata. A fund has been created to help with funeral expenses for all five victims. The Sisk Family Fund was put together by the North Alabama Educators Credit Union. Donations can be made at any NAECU office. You can find a list of those locations on the Rocket City Now app or website.